Hello and welcome to another CG tip. What we're going to look at today is how to get around the problem of when you're creating a pull vector constraint which allows you to control where the elbow or the knee is pointing when you're using an IK arm or a leg. How do you prevent it from moving? Now let me just demonstrate what I mean. So we have a control here which we're going to use to control the elbow position when moving it around and when in IK. So what you would normally do is you would select the elbow control, select the IK handle and go to constrain pull vector. You can then move the control back behind the arm but as you can see as you move the control back the elbow, the arm is rotating slightly so the elbow has moved. Now the problem with this is if we then switch between IK and FK we've got an offset and we've got movement which we don't want. We ideally want the IK and FK to be as seamless as possible so you don't see the transition. So let's just delete that pull vector constraint. So what I do when I'm setting up arms and legs is I just do a couple of simple things. The first thing I do is I select the elbow or the knee and I always have an offset group above each of my controls and this just allows me to change the position and the orientation of a control without actually adding on any values here. Now you can use freeze transforms but the problem then is when you freeze the transforms you lose the orientation data. So let me just show you here. So if I select the elbow and then I select the elbow offset control, constraint, go to constraint parent, make sure maintain offset is disabled, click add. So as you can see that's rotated now. So the elbow control itself is matching the orientation of the elbow. And as you can see on the elbow control we don't have any values. They're all stored now on the control offset. So that just makes a nice clean rig. So that's the first thing I always do. I always make sure that the control matches the orientation of the joint. So now we can go in and we can create our pole vector constraint. Constraint vector. Now this in itself will not fix the issue. All we're guaranteeing is that the elbow control is actually going to point directly behind the, behind the elbow itself. So if I move this back, now this is pointing in the right direction but we're still getting an offset when we move it behind. So we ideally need a way change the position of this control so that when we move it behind it's not going to change the way that the elbow is pointing. So what I first do is I create a couple of quick locators. So we've got one there, one there. Just going to make them a bit smaller. And then I'm just going to quickly parent constrain those to the elbow. Again, just so it matches the orientation and the position of that joint. We'll delete those. And then I need to find the IK and FK elbow joints. So we've got one here and one here. And we're just going to parent these locators. One to the IK elbow or the radius joint and one to the FK. And now I'm going to move these two behind to roughly where we want the elbow control to be. So now if I move this elbow control back we can see that the arm is moving but what we can also see is that this locator has moved up because it's parented to the IK arm. So we can see exactly how much this has moved. So I'm just going to zero that back out because what we need to do is we need to move the 
elbow control offset, not the elbow control. So I'm going to move this back to roughly where we want it to be. We could snap it to that locator there. Now, the quick way to do this is just to eyeball it. And then we can just move the control down just so those locators are in exactly the same place. So that's kind of okay. So now we can delete those locators. We've got our elbow control in place. It doesn't have any values on it. And if we blend between IK and FK now, see, we get no movement. If I just hide the joints, so that's perfect. We get no movement as we switch between IK and FK. And we still have control over the elbow. Now you could if you wanted to, and this is useful if you're scripting. You could create a distance between node, between this and this locator. So when this is back here and these have separated, you know that you can then work out the exact precise distance between these two locators. And then you know exactly how much you need to move this down by. I've just moved the control rather than the actual offset group. But yeah, you could just use a distance between node or you could even use the measuring tools, the distance tool, to measure how far between these two the distance is, and then use that to move your control down. But like I say, for this demonstration, I'm happy just to do it by eye, then we don't need those anymore. And there we go. And like I always do with the L with the offset groups, you can then just Lock and hide that, and all you're left with is this control for the elbow, which now blends between IK and FK, and the arm doesn't move. So it's a much more solid rig. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know in the comments below. Also, let me know if you have any questions, and tell me what future videos you would like to see. And why not say thanks with a small donation via my coffee page? As always, remember to like this tutorial and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with future videos. This is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.